Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily, where we work to keep you up to speed with what's going on in the global automotive industry. As diplomatic tensions continue to ratchet up over Russia's power grab in the Crimea, Western automakers are worrying about trade sanctions and financial boycotts. That's because the Russian car market, with sales of about 3 million vehicles a year, is an important one, and Western automakers have invested heavily there. Autovaz is the largest car company in Russia, with nearly half a million sales a year. That's the company that has the Lada brand. Renault owns about 25% of Autovaz, which is now run by Bo Anderson, the former head of purchasing for General Motors. Hyundai Kia are the next biggest players, followed by General Motors, which sell cars under the Cadillac, Chevrolet, Opel, and Daewoo brands. Yep, the Daewoo brand is still alive and kicking in the Russian market. The Volkswagen Group is in fourth place, thanks to its Audi, VW, Seat, and Skoda brands. Renault is in fifth place, followed by Toyota and Nissan. Ford is the eighth largest automaker, followed by Gaz, a Russian automaker. And in 10th place is Mitsubishi. By the way, there are nine different Chinese brands sold in the Russian market, and their sales are growing much faster than the overall market. So if diplomacy fails, look for the Chinese to make even more significant inroads. While EVs can help the environment, one of the materials used in lithium-ion batteries, graphite, is adding to pollution problems in China. The country which produces the most of the world's graphite supply is closing mines and processors in an effort to clean its air and water. Bloomberg reports that some analysts believe this could push the price of gra graphite up 30%, which could boost the price of battery packs by as much as 5%. However, other analysts say the closures won't have much of an impact, but it's a story we'll have to keep our eye on. Finding engineers that are interested in the automotive industry can be difficult, and finding engineers interested in Formula One is even harder. But Infinity is currently taking applications for its Performance Engineering Academy. There are a few requirements and restrictions, but if chosen, there's a year-long assignment with the Infinity Red Bull Racing Team in the UK with accommodations, full salary, and a company car, as well as working with the road engineers. Click the link in today's show notes for full details. Not long ago, we reported that Volvo was getting back to its safety routes, and one new technology it's showing off highlights that sentiment. The Swedish automaker has launched a pilot program in which road friction data is shared within a cloud-based system. When a car detects a slippery or icy section of road, that information is transmitted to a database via the mobile phone network. It's then sent to other approaching vehicles in the form of a warning on the dash, allowing the driver to take appropriate action. The information will also be sent to the road commissioner which could be used to make winter road maintenance even more efficient. Volvo currently has a fleet of 50 vehicles equipped with the technology, with plans to expand it next winter. In an effort to find out if GM's ignition cylinder issue could have been prevented and stop failures like this in the future, GM CEO Mary Barra will speak before Congress. She, along with acting administrator of NHTSA, David Freeman, will testify to the House Energy and Commerce Committee on April the 1st. And in other GM and Ignition news, the automaker has recruited help from rental firms Enterprise, Hertz, and Avis just in case it runs out of loaner vehicles. GM has already recalled about 1.6 million vehicles due to the issue and has offered up loaners to the owners of affected vehicles. The agencies will shuttle active rental cars to nearby dealers if needed and the automaker will foot the entire bill. Coming up next, a look at the new aluminum Ford F-150. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. On AutoLine this week, the topic is all about the new aluminum-intensive Ford F-150. In the following clip, the chief engineer of the vehicle, Pete Reyes, 
and the head of global product at Ford, Raj Nair, explain how the development of the new truck differed from past F-150s. The uh, program timeline was typical to F-Series, but what was different was the upfront work. So before we kicked off the program, uh, we built two phases of prototypes where the underbody was the current F-150, uh, not the new one that we've got with the truck. And the upper body looked exactly like today's F-150, but, but was aluminum. And it was, uh, it, it was that testing uh, to determine what gauges, what alloys, uh, what reinforcements we were going to need to start a program. Because once you start a program, typically in steel, you know exactly what you're doing in terms of uh, steel strengths and gauges right from the start. And you start developing right in the studio what that vehicle wants to look like. So we needed to know uh, where all our 6,000 series alloys were going to go, about what gauges, when we kicked off the program. So there was upfront work to build the architecture, and then, then, then it was typical program timing. Raj, I got to believe too that there was a lot of upfront work in planning out the supply chain, in planning out the, the manufacturing process. Th this changes a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly working you know, really closely with our, our aluminum partners, this is going to be a very big increase relative to the use of automotive grade aluminums, and, and not just in the amount, but in the alloys that we were looking for. And we had some very specific technologies, some very specific heat treatment processes that we wanted to use to, to get the high strength alloys that we felt were appropriate for the truck. And so it was a really close partnership with our aluminum suppliers, both in terms of capacity, but also the technology uh, that we wanted to use in the truck. And, and that's gone very well for us. And uh, as you can see, there's a, they're getting a lot of calls now. They're getting a lot of calls, but uh, uh, the aluminum producers have even told me it's going to take three years for them to put the capacity in place if another competitor of Ford wants to do the same thing with their pickup, that there just is not that much capacity out there right now. Yeah, and as far as an aluminum producer, uh, the automotive industry is big, but it's not their biggest industry. You know, they're, they're supplying aluminum to a lot of other industries, and therefore the capacity is tight overall. And it was important for us to have a very early partnership with them. And, and that's why we were developing things early. We saw this trend coming in the industry. We saw the capabilities that we could do with aluminum alloys in high volumes. And we felt it was important to, to develop those partnerships early and get the capacity agreements in early. Also joining John for that show is Doug Scott, the marketing manager of the F-150. And as always, you can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv. But that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.